Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim, I'm one of the Emergency Medicine Consultants in United Kingdom and today we're going to be discussing case number 11 from our Facebook page. Uh, this discussion might take a little bit longer than normal because I'm planning to cover some basics there and then to go to some exceptions to the rules. So it might take a little bit longer just to warn you from the beginning. Uh, the other thing is that there will be a question in the last slide that I'll be very grateful if you can uh, check if you know the answer for or not and uh, just write your answer in the comment and we'll see how it goes. So without any further delays, let's move on and see what's going to happen. So our case today is an 84 year old male patient presented to ED with a non-specific chest pain that has been going on for about two days. All the patient's vital signs were normal and this was his ECG. So, as I always say, this is the time to pause the video, have a detailed look at the ECG and try to figure out what's going on, then come back and we'll talk about it. Okay, welcome back, let's move on. Let's analyze the ECG. So if you look at this ECG, I guess um, if we try to analyze this, uh, we're not going to see much that will strike us from the um, analysis point of view. Uh, what we can see here is that the axis is uh, looking at one and AVF. It is, uh, one is pointing up, AVF is pointing down, so that is a left axis deviation. Maybe there is a little bit of a first degree heart block in here. There is no other significant findings that I would comment on except probably one thing especially we're talking about ischemia that will uh, catch our eyes, which is V3 ST elevation. So let's, uh, let's make this bigger and have a look at that. So looking at V3, yeah, this is a scary looking ST elevation in lead three. It's, um, it's about maybe three millimeters elevation. So that is definitely significant. And the question is gonna be now, would we consider this a STEMI or not? So to find out the answer for this, we'll need first to review the STEMI definition. So let's go through the STEMI definition in different guidelines to see if our patient would fulfill the definition and uh, will be counted as a STEMI or not. Starting from the advanced life support definition, this is what they said. They said uh, to define an acute MI, you will need to have a chest pain plus more than two millimeters of ST elevation in two adjacent chest leads, or more than one millimeter in uh, two or more adjacent limb leads. So two millimeters in the chest leads, one millimeter uh, in the limb leads. This is the definition from the ALS. But the American Heart Association guidelines and the American College of Cardiology guidelines 2013 uh, talked about um, a different definition. So they defined STEMI as one millimeter of ST elevation in two contiguous leads anywhere in the ECG except V2 and V3 in absence of left bundle branch block or left ventricular hypertrophy. So they're talking about one millimeter in the limb leads and the chest leads rather than one in the uh, limb leads and two in the chest leads like the ALS. How about V2 and V3? Well, they said in a male less than 40 year old, you're allowed up to 2.5 millimeters elevation. Any more is bad. In a male more than 40 year old, then it's two millimeters or more. In a female, 1.5 millimeter or more, regardless the age. So this is the definition of STEMI from the American College of Cardiology and American um, Heart Association guidelines. How about the European Society of Cardiology guidelines? So again, in 2017, they published this definition. And if you go through this definition, you will find that it is exactly the same as the American one. They're talking about one millimeter or more of ST elevation anywhere in the ECG, except V2 and V3. And regarding V2 and V3, they're talking about exactly same numbers of elevation. So the European Society of Cardiology guidelines and the American Heart Association guidelines are talking about exactly the same definition, which is very different to the LS definition. Moving on to the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction that was published in December 2018, uh, they said the following. 
exactly the same as the European Society of Cardiology guidelines and the American Heart Association guidelines. It is one millimeter in all leads other than V2 and V3. So it looks like there is a universal agreement uh, regarding uh, this definition, except in the ALS and one more uh, society that are um, that's still talking about exactly the same definition as the LS, which is the sign guidelines. So the Scottish guidelines define STEMI as ST elevation um, of more than one one millimeter or more in two adjacent limb leads and two millimeters or more in two contiguous precordial leads. So this is exactly as the LS definition. But this is the 2016 guidelines. I'm not aware about any update that happened to this one, but to be honest, looking at what happened worldwide uh, in the STEMI definition, I've got a feeling that this definition will change and it will just follow the others. So if we apply this to our case, we will, um, we will notice that our patient has got an elevation in V3 that is, I would say about three millimeters. So in any guidelines, this is significant enough to be counted as a STEMI. But there is another problem here. There is no elevation anywhere else in this ECG except in V3. And this is the problem I've had with this patient. I need two contiguous leads to consider this a STEMI, and this is not the case. So are there exceptions to the guideline definition that we've seen before? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about some cases that will fall outside the usual definition of STEMI that we've seen before. So case number one is going to be this one. This is something that I want to talk about for a long time and I'm planning to cover it with more details in the near future. But if you look at this ECG, if this patient is coming to you with chest pain, you will notice that there is an ST elevation in AVR. Maybe there is an ST elevation in V1, maybe not, who knows, but AVR it's got, has got the, the highest, the most significant elevation that you would see here. No elevation anywhere else in the ECG. There is depression in most of the other leads, if not all of them. So the question now is, with this elevation in AVR only, would you consider this as STEMI? And would you activate PCI in your local hospital for this? Well, the answer should be yes. So again, back to the 2013 American Heart Association guidelines, talking about STEMI definition. They said that there, they said multi-lead ST depression with coexistent ST elevation and lead AVR has been described in patients with left main uh, or proximal LAD occlusion. So when you see this elevation in AVR only, plus depression in most of the other leads, plus chest pain, think either proximal LAD occlusion or left main coronary occlusion or triple vessel disease. So basically they're all bad. In the same guidelines, they've also said that actually um, in that table talking about the indication for fibrinolytic therapy, they said that to thrombolize a patient with ST depression, that is harmful, except if it's true posterior or when associated with ST elevation in AVR. So that is another thing that they've mentioned in these guidelines. How about the European Society of Cardiology guidelines 2017? Did they mention that there? Yes, they talked about it there in this table and they said that Actually, um, ischemia due to left main coronary occlusion or multivessel disease is being described when you see ST depression in eight or more of the surface leads coupled with ST elevation in AVR and or V1. So again, AVR, ST elevation alone in presence of chest pain and depression in most of the other leads, this is a left main occlusion or um, proximal LAD occlusion. So that was the first example. Second example is here. So again, if this patient is coming to you with chest pain and you do the ECG, you will notice here that our problem is in AVL and in V2 and uh, we don't have it anywhere else. So again, would you consider this a STEMI and would you activate PCI in your local hospital for this patient? Well, let's have a proper look at this ECG. If you analyze this ECG, you will notice that we've got a a quite a good going ST elevation, scary looking in AVL. We've got an elevation in V2 as well. That is again, scary looking and it looks bad. Maybe there is, the ST is trying to go up in lead one, but it's not really convincing. Maybe V5, V6, but the significant elevation 
is going to be in AVL and in V2. Plus, we've got a quite significant, scary looking SD depression in the inferior leads, mainly 3 and uh, AVF. So, the problem here is we've got two leads that are showing the elevation, but they're not contiguous. We know that the contiguous leads for AVL are going to be lead 1 and uh, V5 and V6, as this is the these are the lateral leads. And for V2, that will be V1 and V3 as the anterior leads. But AVL and V2, would we count them as two contiguous leads or not to fulfill the definition? Well, the answer here is, yeah, when they come together, these are um, they are a sign of a first diagonal branch occlusion um, of the LAD artery. So that's another example of the same same presentation. This was one of my patients who presented with a chest pain. And again, ST elevation AVL, ST elevation and V2. Uh, he's been to the cath lab and he was found to have a diagonal occlusion. So there has been so many case reports talking about this. If we go back to 1996 in the American Heart Journal, they've talked uh, in this um, one about a acute myocardial infarction um, with ST elevation in uh, lead AVL. And what they commented in the conclusion was this is part of the conclusion. So they said ST elevation AVL and V2 not accompanied by ST elevation and V3 to V5, so AVL and V2 on their own, um, that favoured the um, first diagonal branch occlusion with a negative predictive value of 100%. They've also mentioned that ST elevation and AVL alone, accompanied by ST depression and V2, uh, that predict obstruction of the first obtuse marginal branch. So ST elevation, AVL and V2, that's that's ACS, that's a STEMI. ST elevation in uh, AVL alone with depression in V2, that's another uh, occlusive MI presentation. So this is just to show you uh, what we're talking about. So this is the diagonal branch of the LAD. So another case report, um, but this time it's talking about a different uh, area of the heart. So they're talking about inferior wall ST elevation, but the elevation was on lead three only. So in this case, uh, they found um, that um, S elevation in the inferior, so in lead 3 only, uh, with maximal precordial ST depression in V4 to V6, uh, it was associated with severe complications. So inferior wall STEMI presented initially with ST elevation in lead 3 only, that was a bad one. And there are so many other Case reports talking about these particular leads, lead AVL, lead 3, and uh, lead V2. But regarding our case, if we go back to this one, let's have a look at the ECG and see if we've covered what happened here or not. So this was the ECG that the patient came with. He came in with an ST elevation in V3 only. Uh, when I saw this patient first, and that was a few years ago, uh, I've never heard about an ST elevation in uh, isolated lead that is counted as a STEMI. I was following the definition that I was aware of that time. So, uh, so this patient was really concerning to me and I wasn't really sure what to do. So um, we've tried to get an echo, but the views were really poor. So my plan was to get serial ECGs, get a troponin and see how it goes. So that was the first ECG. We've repeated the ECG. And to be honest, there was no much difference uh, comparing the first one with the second. But when we did the third ECG, it looked very different. We started getting poor R wave progression and uh, the shape of the ST elevation in V3 has changed. And it looks like it's kind of tombstoning now. So um, at this point, we've decided to stop and to activate the PCI. And because I didn't have a PCI in my local hospital, I had to activate it in a nearby hospital and transfer the patient there. The troponin came back and it was positive. It wasn't as high as what you would think for a patient who's been having an MI for two days, but it was, it was high, it was uh, detectable. And the patient went to the other hospital and had his um, and, and has been taken to the cath lab and was found to have a um, an LED occlusion that was stented. And this was it regarding this case. So um, uh, some of you might ask, well, uh, you haven't mentioned anything about case reports regarding unisolated ST elevation in V 
3. So uh, why didn't you just write this one as a case report? Uh, you are absolutely right. I couldn't find anything uh, that is related to isolated ST elevation in V3. Uh, and I didn't write a case report regarding this case because I was uh, lazy. I thought that I'm just uh, ignorant and, I don't, and, and it might be there and I don't know about that. Uh, but actually, I couldn't find any reference, but it's now too late to do it. So uh, if you see a similar case, uh, feel free to publish that and don't do what I did. Uh, OK, in summary, so we've talked about the STEMI definition. And uh, now we know that ST elevation of one millimeter or more anywhere in the ECG, that's B2 and B3, as long as you've got two contiguous leads and in no uh, left bundle and LBH is counted as a STEMI. So one millimeter or more rather than one in the uh, limb leads and two in the chest leads. Regarding V2 and V3, in a male less than 40 years old, 2.5 millimeters or more. In a male more than 40 years old, two millimeters or more. And in a female, uh, regardless of the age, it's 1.5 millimeter or more. Moving on to the exceptions of the rule, ST elevation AVR on its own is banned. ST elevation AVL plus or minus V2 is bad. And ST elevation in lead 3 alone is bad. As long as you've got a clinical presentation uh, and a patient that looks like they've got an MRI, then be worried when you see these um, exceptions to the uh, rule of two contiguous leads. And this is it regarding uh, this case. So I'm really sorry that it took us longer this time to discuss. And now is the time for the question. So. Uh, where do you think this picture is taken from? Feel free to write your answer in the comments and feel free to write any questions regarding what we've discussed. And uh, I'm not going to take any longer of your time. Thank you very much for listening and uh, Happy New Year for all of you and stay safe. Bye for now.